Well, hello again and welcome back. This is part three of the unit on waves. And in this part, we're going to start connecting some things that you've learned about waves, all the different measurements you can make, some properties that they have. We're going to connect them to some practical uh, applications. And typically when we study waves, we focus on sound waves and light waves. So a lot of that in this part of the unit. I'm also going to introduce some ideas about things that waves do. I call those behaviors of waves. And you will explore these more in the other activities in this part of the unit. But I'm kind of going to just give you an introduction and a teaser to some of these things. Now, if your notes packet looks a little different than mine, just know that um, right now I'm kind of tweaking this. I'm, I'm adjusting some things. So by the time you get your copy, it could look a little different. Okay. So let's start with some specifics about light waves and sound waves, okay? Um, so let's just say this. The way we hear sound and see light, and we're talking about our senses here, so our ears can pick up some sounds and our eyes can pick up some light, but not all of it. I'll talk about that later. But the way we hear and we see relates to wave properties. And an important part of this are ears and eyes. So there's a little anatomy and physiology at work here, too. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into the function of the ear and the eye, but they are pretty critical in this whole conversation. Okay, so a lot of this information about the connection between the waves and what we hear or see is typically shown... on a, it's called a spectrum. Looks like a Latin word. I know there's Latin words. They tend to end with like U-M. So here on your page, you will see a spectrum. And unfortunately, because we only have black and white copiers, it's not going to look uh, as it should. Now, if you find this image online, you will see some nice color. In fact, I'll show you that in just a second. But what I included here on yours was uh, what we call the electromagnetic spectrum. I'm going to describe what that word means in just a second. But these are often referred to as light waves. Now, we'll go into more detail, but there's only a few categories of light waves that your eyes can actually see. Most of the waves that we call electromagnetic waves, or we often call it radiation, those waves are completely invisible to us. They're all around us. We're living in a sea of electromagnetic waves. But just a few of them will stimulate your eyes to be able to see them. Okay? We call that the visible waves. All right? And that's what's kind of down here. So we take this tiny little part here. You see this little sliver of the whole thing. Again, these are all the different categories in my spectrum here, I have seven different categories. The middle one is called the visible type of electromagnetic waves or visible light. And it is further subdivided into categories, seven categories, and we name the colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. That's Roy G. Biv for short. So if you ever hear me say Roy G, Biv, I am referring to the seven colors of visible light that we often use to describe what different categories are within the visible spectrum, okay? Let me see if I can find a quick image of this so you can see what it looks like with some color. Okay, here's that image I started with, and it really does look so much nicer when you see how uh, this little visible part of the spectrum, again, we only give it its own category because those are ones that our eyes are typically sensitive to, 
but it's not really different. The, that type of wave is not any different from any other electromagnetic wave, okay? So let's talk next about why do we call them electromagnetic waves or electromagnetic radiation? Okay, so let's describe. I think I got enough space on here. And now, if you need to go on to the next page, there's a little flexibility here. So let's go into a couple of details about what this word refers to. Electromagnetic. And there's so much high-level detail we can go into here that we're not even going to touch. It really, um, at its essence, describes two important characteristics. First of all, we've talked before about the source of a wave. And, you know, in my descriptions and in my animations that I use in class, the source of the wave is just whatever is originally causing the vibration that makes the wave begin. So it might be the hand moving a slinky or a rope. It might be a pebble hitting the water and creating the wave. But for electromagnetic waves, the source is a vibrating charged particle. And I'll put in parentheses here because it's often an electron. You remember those little guys from when we studied our chemistry. Every atom has electrons in it. They're really, really tiny, almost zero mass, and actually very easy to move. So we've got moving electrons all over the place. Every atom actually has some moving electrons, and that's why some things glow. They give off light. But we won't get into the weeds of all of this. Just know that when we vibrate a charged particle, we can create an electromagnetic wave that then continues out, okay? And the, the next important feature of electromagnetic waves is uh, how they move, and in particular, what they move through, okay? So these are able to move through space. Now, I don't mean space necessarily like outer space. What I mean is, even if you don't have what we call the medium, the thing for the wave to travel through, if we take all matter out of something, so imagine we got a little box and we magically remove all the air from it and every little particle we possibly can. <clears throat> so there's nothing in the box. That's another word for, a, um, for, for space, is nothingness. Electromagnetic waves can actually travel through that, which sounds a little unusual because when I've shown in my animations, like we always see something actually moving. So there's, you know, little molecules that hold the rope or the slinky together, or there's little water molecules that are part of the lake. And those are the things that are actually moving up and down or back and forth. But with electromagnetic waves, we don't have to have anything like that, and they can still move, okay? So let me zoom in here a little bit, and this might be hard to read in your notes, but again, we'll go into this in more detail in the first worksheet. All of these different kind of waves are able to move through space. You might also hear this referred to as moving through a vacuum. A vacuum is another name for uh, an area where all the matter has been removed, okay? So we've mentioned visible light. <clears throat> Those, again, are only broken off into their own little category because of how they interact with your eyes. But there's other kinds of waves. Radio waves, and that's a broad category, but when we broadcast TV radio signals, um, cellular phone signals, um, those are all kind of categorized as either radio waves or some of them microwaves, all right? There's something called IR or infrared. A lot of your remote control um, signals are given through these um, waves called infrared waves. Now, again, you're not going to see these because your eyes are not tuned to be sensitive to these. And then we've got the visible part. And then we've got, you've heard of this before, ultraviolet or UV light. X-rays, those are invisible. Now, if you've been to the doctor or dentist, you've probably been around X-rays. There's X-rays mostly up in space. Very few of them are, are zipping around our, through our atmosphere, fortunately. 
and these really kind of dangerous high energy waves called gamma waves, right? So all of those are considered electromagnetic magnetic because of their source and because of how they're able to travel through space. Okay, hopefully you ended up with just amount of space there. I kind of wanted this to be on the same page as the electromagnetic spectrum. But now we're going to look at a similar thing, but this is called a sound spectrum. Now this has similar information, but it is a little different. Um, there are, kind of like for light waves, um, those are the ones that we can see, but there's a lot of electromagnetic magnetic waves we can't. The same is true for sound waves. Not every sound is something that our ears are necessarily going to be able to hear. They're not, I call it, tuned to hear those sounds. So this particular spectrum shows which types of waves humans are able to hear, and it compares it with some other common animals. And you've probably heard of these before, that whales can communicate through these waves. Bats use echolocation with these waves. And these are all waves, some of which we could hear, um, like up here, there's some overlap with the whales and the bats, but a lot of them we can't. You also probably know that dogs can hear really high-pitched sounds. That's because our ears are not tuned to those, but dogs are. Um, so we'll, again, go into more detail on this. But something that I wanted to talk about, about sound waves, makes them different than light waves, is sound waves are considered mechanical waves. So again, just to kind of describe how this relates, waves are either considered mechanical waves or electromagnetic. Okay, with the electromagnetic, they are able to travel without the benefit of any medium to travel through. So they could travel through space, like outer space, or through any kind of, uh, you know, vacuum here on Earth. But mechanical waves cannot. They must have a medium. And if you want to think of it this way, the medium is, you know, molecules or atoms or something. We, I just call them particles kind of generically. Oops. So they need a medium to travel through. And the medium can be things, again, we've talked about these and demonstrated these, uh, water, a spring is great for demonstrating waves, um, a rope. Or in the case of most sound waves, they're going to travel through air. You know, you're hearing my voice because out of the speaker in your device um, comes these sound waves. The speaker actually vibrates. And it travels through the air and eventually hits your ears. And your ears are tuned to the types of waves that I'm making. Okay? Again, that's something about where these waves fall on the spectrum. Right? But sound can also travel through water. Sound could travel through a solid. And if you hold your ear up to a door and somebody taps on it, you can really hear that uh, well through there. Um, you could, uh, and animals hear, you know, um, sound coming through the earth. And that's how sometimes they know that there's a storm coming or something like that. It used to be that you could put your ear to the ground and uh, back in the day and you could hear the enemy coming up because they were riding on horseback. And the, the hooves of the horse, horses were making noise and that traveled through the earth. So all considered mechanical waves, right? So sound waves are mechanical. They cannot travel without something to travel through. Okay, so that's a little introduction into light waves and sound waves. And again, we'll go into more detail in the uh, class activities that I have. But let me introduce kind of the other part of part three. If I can get this to focus here. Sorry. That's not your eyes doing that. All right. We're going to talk about some interesting behaviors that we look at. And there are five of them. Some of these actually you'll be familiar with, I think. 
Sorry for the focus issue. That's my camera trying to adjust for things. So again, introduction here. That's all. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because that's for later um, in some of the lab work and, and other things that we're going to be doing. And I'll do some mini lectures in class. Okay. So I'm going to start with the most familiar. There's actually five of them. So waves can undergo what's called reflection. You've heard of this. Reflection in a mirror, for example. This would be like what happens when waves hit a barrier of some kind, like a wall. You'll find this one, reflection, the easiest of the five because you're most familiar with it. Turns out, that the reflection of waves is very similar to how a ball bounces off something. When it's a ball, like a tennis ball, or a, maybe you're playing pool with somebody has a pool table, and the way the ball bounces off the little side rail. Um, if you play basketball and you throw the ball off the backboard, and you know how it's going to bounce off the backboard to get into the basket, right? Uh, things like racquetball and handball, those are all related to, you know, really bouncing off of a wall. Well, reflection of waves is very, very similar to a bouncing ball off of a wall, okay? So again, more detail later. But these other four are actually pretty different from what you are used to or have experienced before. So I'll go into more detail during future class periods. So this next behavior is called interference, wave interference. That's a word you're familiar with, but we've never really applied it to waves yet. So this will describe what happens when two or more waves meet at the same place. I'll have a little demonstration in class what that looks like. It's really kind of neat. And this actually affects all kinds of things about what you hear with sound waves and what you see with light waves. Interference plays a huge role in that. But again, I'll just kind of plant the seed here for you. All right, the third one. There are five of these, by the way, in case you're wondering how many we're going to do. <clears throat> Waves undergo something known as diffraction. This is kind of a neat one, too. I'll describe this as waves spreading out. when going through a small opening or around a small, let's just call it a barrier. I mentioned barrier before, so waves will reflect off of a barrier like a wall, but they will also do something interesting when they go around it, okay? Again, not going to give you the details here. You don't, nobody wants to be here that long. We're already running towards 20 minutes. Got two more to go here. Now, again, this page in your notes packet might look a little different than mine. Mine is right now just blank. By the time you get a copy of this, I might have adjusted it a little bit, all right? So we're continuing our wave behaviors. Two more to go. So the fourth one is called the refraction. Again, sorry for my camera trying to focus here. Let's see if I can adjust things a little bit. While this is doing its thing here. There we go. Um, be careful. There is a, a word that we studied when we studied longitudinal waves. Longitudinal waves had these compressions and rarefactions. They're very similar words. This is refraction, very different, but uh, sounds and, and is spelled with very similar letters. 
So this describes um, what happens to the speed and direction of a wave when it passes into a different medium. So imagine here, we'll, we'll talk about sound waves. I talked about how sound waves could travel through a solid, like the door. You can hear sounds coming through a door. Well, at one point, the wave is traveling through the door, and then it hits the air and travels out into the air. Or maybe it's going through the air first and then hits a door. But when that wave goes from one medium and into a different medium, some things can change about it. And I mentioned a couple here. We'll go into more detail later, but the speed will be different. And we've talked about how speed relates to what medium the wave is in but it also affects the direction. So this is actually how we bend the direction of waves. The fact that I'm wearing glasses and a lot of you have glasses or contacts, the whole point of the glasses, the shape of glasses and or the shape of contacts is so that we can bend light waves to focus where we need them to on your eye, okay? So kind of a neat application of that. And the last one. This is called the Doppler effect. And this describes how <clears throat> motion can affect the frequency and wavelength of a wave. I'll remind you again, I usually do this in my videos. You can pause. If I start talking and you're still writing, you can pause it, finish writing. So um, we're going to study more about this later, but um, this is typically something that you hear, like in in, uh, in your lives, you've probably heard the Doppler effect before, you might not know why, but if you have a wave, a sound wave that's moving, or if you yourself are moving, it can affect how we hear sounds. They'll sound higher or lower pitch. It actually can affect also the colors that you see, okay, because of motion. So I'll go into both of those when we describe the Doppler effect in more detail, all right? Okay, so I want to wrap this up because we've been going on pretty long here. So there are the five, no particular order other than probably the order that I want to describe them. Reflection, interference, diffraction, I stopped numbering for some reason. Refraction, that's another word of caution here. Refraction and reflection, very different, but they sound real similar. And then the fifth one is the Doppler effect. So those five... We're going to dive in into more detail, and I'll maybe take a day in each class period and give you a little bit more detail about it. And you'll also get to dive in a little bit more in some of the class activities we have. All right. Okay. So I think that's enough for now. Kind of get you started. Um, and I promise more details to come because there's a lot of really neat, applicable things. And you'll say to yourself, oh, this is why we do this in music class or band class. Or this is why it looks different when this happens. So hopefully you can connect a lot of this with what you know from real life experience. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll continue on.